Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 3 to the power x minus 2 equals 2 to the power 1 over x. This is a homemade problem, which means I came up with the idea, but pretty much anyone can come up with a problem like this. So first of all, notice that x equals 0 does not satisfy the equation because it's in the denominator. It makes our expression undefined. So let's go ahead and set x not equal to 0. Under this condition, we can go ahead and raise both sides to the power x, which is going to simplify our expression a great deal, but well, sort of, because the x and 1 over x are going to cancel out. Great, so we're going to have a number on one side, which is good. And then here, we're supposed to multiply the exponents, so that's going to give us 3 to the power x squared minus 2x. Awesome. At this point, the problem looks pretty simple. You're go just going to use something to bring down the exponent, which is called uh, log or ln, right? I'm going to use natural log and then go for x, right? Okay, there's a couple of things we're going to look at, but first of all, let's go ahead and look for some solutions. I'm going to go ahead and natural log both sides. Let me go ahead and uh, space it out a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and ln this side and L on this side. You don't have to use parentheses, but it just makes it a little uh, nicer. So now we're going to move this to the front. That's going to give us, because remember, properties of logs allow you to write L on a to the power n as n times L on a. Of course, we have, we have to have certain conditions. a must be positive, a to the n must be positive, so on and so forth. So here we get x squared minus 2x times L on 3 equals ln 2. So, okay. Now, from here, we want to solve for x, obviously, right? So, let's go ahead and... So, one way to look at it is we can go ahead and distribute everything. Let me just quickly uh, introduce you to that because uh, we're going to probably going to go uh, with one of these, right? You can go ahead and kind of put everything on the same side and kind of turn this into a quadratic equation. So, how can I do that? So you can kind of write it like ln3 multiplied by x squared minus 2 ln3 multiplied by x minus ln2 equals 0. Now, if you pay attention to this equation, you're going to realize that it is actually quadratic in x because this is x squared, this is x. So the coefficient of x squared is a, this is b, and that's c. And by using the quadratic formula, we can go ahead and solve for x. Let's go ahead and try that first. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4 times ln 3 squared, minus, that's going to turn into a plus sign, plus 4ac, which is 4 times ln 3 times ln 2. Okay? So you can basically go ahead and simplify this a little bit. What is 4 ln 3 times ln 2, or what's 4 ln 3 squared, so on and so forth, right? But here's the thing. This is not the best way to do it, because if you go back you're going to realize something really cool. We actually have a much simpler way to do it. So if you pay attention to this expression, x squared minus 2x actually can be easily turned into a perfect square. So we're going to use the method of completing the square instead. So let's go ahead and move this a little bit further. So now I'm going to go ahead and Add 1 to both sides, so let's go ahead and fix this as well. So I'm probably going to just write it like this. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to be adding plus 1 and plus 1 on both sides. And the, the purpose of that is to get a perfect square on the left-hand side. So that gives me x minus 1 squared. And here, if you make a common denominator, you're going to get ln 2 plus ln 3 divided by ln 3. Great. So the right-hand side can actually be simplified because remember ln a plus ln b can be written as ln a b. Of course, if a b are both positive in this case, we can combine them or condense them, right? So this gives us ln 2 times 3, which is ln 6. Let's go ahead and erase this and replace it with ln 6. So now I have a perfect square and I can square root both sides. That's going to give me with the plus minus sign two square roots. So that's going to equal x minus 1, and then after adding 1 to both sides, 
you're going to get 1 plus minus the square root of ln 6 over ln 3. Now, if you did use the quadratic formula, you would get these answers. But notice, this is a lot easier, especially when you have uh, stuff like ln. Okay? So what is that supposed to mean, though? We got two x values. Are they going to satisfy the original equation? Yes, you can definitely uh, plug it in and to see what is going on. For example, if you just go with uh, one of these, you can go ahead and substitute that into the original equation. First of all, what is x minus 2? Let's go ahead and evaluate it. That's going to be negative 1 plus this, right? And then we're going to do 3 to the power that, right? So 3 to the power this. And then on the other hand, we're supposed to do 2 to the power of 1 over x. So what is 1 over x? Well, 1 over x is going to be a little painful because what you need to do is you probably want to write it like this first and then make a common denominator and write it like square root of ln 3 plus square root of ln 6 divided by the square root of ln 3 and then flip it because what you want to do is uh, take the reciprocal so this that's this is what you're going to be getting for 1 over x and then you have to do 2 to the power of this number so it's going to be 2 to the power square root of ln 3 over square root of ln 3 plus square root of ln 6. Do you think this is equal to 3 to the power negative 1 plus the square root of ln 6 over ln 3. Obviously, making a common denominator, again, here will make uh, it a little easier. So let's go ahead and write this as square root of ln 6 over square root of ln 3. And then from here, we're going to get minus square root of ln 3 after making a common denominator. And it's going to be divided by that. So if you look at these two expressions, hopefully you're going to arrive at something helpful. But again, that's going to be a lot of work. But you can do that. But let's go ahead and look at these from a more functional or calculus perspective, which is going to give us a lot of good insights. So first of all, consider the first function f of x as 3 to the power x minus 2. This is an exponential function. Graphing is fairly easy. You know, it's going to look like this, right? As Well, first of all, as uh, if x is equal to 0, you're going to get... 3 to the power negative 2, which is 1 over 9. So it's going to intersect uh, the x-axis at this. As x approaches infinity, y is going to approach infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, y is going to approach 0. So you're going to get a graph something that looks like this. So it's going to increase. It's always increasing, right? So that's not very interesting. But if you look at the other function, let's call that g of x. 2 to the power 1 over x. Is, this is actually pretty interesting. Because it's, n it's not just ordinary exponential, we have to look at a couple different things here, such as limits. So let's go ahead and look at limits, and then at the end, I'm going to show you a really nice graph of these two functions. So first of all, take a look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. And why am I checking that? Because at 0, the exponent becomes undefined. So, but in the limit sense, this is going to be like 1 over 0 plus, which is positive infinity. So this is going to approach 2 to the power of infinity, which actually approaches infinity. So the limit at 0 from the right is going to be positive infinity. If you approach 0 from the left, which also means that um, you have an infinite limit, that means there is a vertical asymptote. This is going to be 2 to the power negative infinity because you're approaching 0 with negative values. So 1 over negative values are going to be super duper small, negatively very large. So that's going to give you 0 because this is 1 over uh, 2 to the power infinity. Make sense? So we kind of have like different results, which you'll, you'll see on the graph. If you look at the end behavior of the, this function, as x approaches infinity of 2 to the power 1 over x, you're going to get 2 to the power 0, which is 1. So you're going to see that again. Or if x approaches negative infinity, obviously, this is going to be the same. doesn't matter when x approaches infinity, positive or negative, 1 over infinity is always going to approach 0, and this limit is going to be 1 again. So these are the horizontal asymptotes. Again, you'll see these on the graph, sort of. They're not drawn, but you'll get it. And this is also called the end behavior of our function. So let's go ahead and... But, oh, by the way, one thing we didn't do, let me go ahead and do that as well, and then I'll show you the graph, okay? One more thing, bear with me. So this function, I said that's pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and differentiate it. If you differentiate 2 to the power 1 over x, you're going to get the same thing. Multiply by ln 2, multiplied by the derivative of the inside by chain rule, which is negative 1 over x squared. Remember, that's the derivative of 1 over x. 
If you set it equal to zero, you're going to notice something interesting. There is no x value that makes it zero, which means there is no extrema for this function, which means obviously the asymptotes are going to split it up into pieces, but those pieces are either always increasing or always decreasing, right? Probably. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, okay this is the time to like, take a look at the graph. As you can see, the graph has two pieces because the vertical asymptote splits it up, and the horizontal asymptote, of course, is going to be y equals 1. And there are two intersection points, which means both solutions are valid. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.